Next on Made in Virginia, we'll be looking at Virginia apples, everything from picking at glaze apples to processing apple cider vinegar and applesauce at White House Foods. Then on to Williams Orchard for unpasteurized apple cider. Production funding for Made in Virginia is made possible in part by the Virginia Foundation for Public Media, supporting public media initiatives throughout Virginia, and by at Atlantic Union Bank, we believe that Made in Virginia means something special, something unique. After all, Virginia is where tradition meets technology, where hard work combines with innovation, where artisans, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and corporations take business to the next level. We're there every step of the way, as champions of Virginia businesses and as a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. Since 1937, four generations of the Glaze family have grown wholesale apples up and down the Shenandoah Valley on 650 acres of orchards. We're operating about 650 acres now. Uh, we grow predominantly for the fresh market, which is uh, grocery stores, including Safeway, Kroger, Walmart. Uh, we also export apples. And what it means is we need to grow a cosmetically appealing apple that can be washed up, shined up, and put in a cardboard box and sent to a retailer. So we have to be thinking long range all the time. Um, we buy our tr apple trees and the nurseryman needs to know about three years in advance of what we want, whether we want a Fuji or a Gala and what strain of that apple do we want. So three years after we tell them that, then we actually get the tree from the nurseryman, we put it in the ground, and it will not produce apples for another four years. So we've got a seven year lead time on trying to figure out what the consumer's going to buy down the road. And Production after we get the tree going uh, is essentially horticultural practices, maintaining uh, cleanliness in the orchard, uh, adhering to strict food safety regulations that have been promulgated, and as well as we use low input agriculture, uh, which means integrated pest management, uh, reducing the use of pesticides as much as possible, However, in Virginia, we do need to spray, and generally the East Coast, wherever it rains, apple growers do need to spray to control fungus in particular. We do disrupt insects with mating disruption pheromones and good bugs, encouraging good bugs to eat bad bugs. Uh, but fungus is a major problem here in a rainy climate. 70 apple pickers pick apples from August through November, up to six days per week. Once the apples have ripened to maturity, they are picked by hand. They start by picking the bottom of the tree and then set up a ladder to pick the higher apples, placing them gently in their picking bucket. Once the bucket is full, it is carefully transferred to a bin to avoid any bruising on the fruit. Once the bins are full, they are moved by tractor to the loading zone. They are loaded into a truck and the apples are taken to cold storage. Finally, they are sold to wholesale buyers, washed and packed in boxes to order and shipped out. Every apple needs to be picked by hand. Unfortunately, no machine has been developed yet that will pick an apple without bruising. Uh, as hard as they may be, they're very prone to finger bruises and just impact bruises. So every apple gets picked by hand. They wear their bucket, uh, sometimes in front, sometimes to the side, but most important is that their hand be able to reach to the bottom of the bucket. So they will set a ladder in the tree, and first they'll pick off the bottom of the tree in general. Now it varies, but uh, 
so that if they do drop an apple while they're up high, it won't fall down and bruise another apple that's on the bottom. They will pick each apple individually and lay it gently in their picking bucket. So when that bucket gets full, the picker will come down out of the tree, go to his bin, which is near his trees, and the buckets have cloth on the bottom, which cinches up. So he will un unhook that cloth and there's a large hole in it and let the apples gently out of the bottom of the bucket. Everything is designed to reduce bruising. A good picker will pick about 170 to 200 bushels. Uh, a slower picker, maybe 120, something like that, which would be seven of these wooden boxes. We keep them cold first. They immediately go into cold storage. Everyone should always keep their apples cold. Um, and we then develop sales and we tailor our packing to the whatever order is to go out that day. So if we have an order for a gala, we will go into our storage where we know the proper size gala is and we decide we're gonna pack 100 bins of those gala and they then go through the process line, get washed up, brushed up, and put in a cardboard box. Virginia has a great climate for growing certain varieties of apples and offers Glaze Apples great resources to distribute fresh fruit on routes local, regional, and beyond. Uh, the northern Shenandoah Valley, uh, in days gone by, provided at least half the state's apples. And as recently as 1985, I believe we were picking around five million bushels in Frederick and Clark County. Um, the state provided, did, picked around 10 million. The support of everybody in Virginia it really helps keep us farming. We are very grateful for uh, the Virginia Department of Agriculture support, for VPI's extension support, and especially for consumers who know how important it is to buy local and the value of buying local. After four generations, Glaze Apple's family business is still going strong and will continue for generations to come. So one of my big goals has been to preserve the farmland. And we can't just have farms that are pretty to look at unless you make a profit. We have lots of expenses. We have taxes just to keep farmland farmland. So my goal has been to support a family off the farm. Um, it's wonderful. If, if I didn't have the chance to come to the farm every day, I would probably go crazy. Um, I used to work for a bank uh, right out of college, and I was a commercial loan officer. And after a quick year, I could not stand it and decided that I would give this a whirl. And I was very grateful that the opportunity was here. Just a few miles away in Winchester, Virginia, is White House Foods, the largest privately held apple processing company in the United States, with over one million square feet under roof. Founded in 1908 by the Board and Armstrong families, it sold in 2006 to David Gum Jr., who is keeping the family-owned and operated tradition alive. If it can be made from an apple, we make it. So mainly, mainly apple uh, production, so juice, vinegar, sauce, slices. We dice it, whatever, whatever, whatever you can do with an apple, we do it. In 1908, uh, the company was founded uh, by, Bo it was called Borden Armstrong. And, uh, and so it was two guys, and, and then Mr. Armstrong Sr. took the company over, and it actually was founded on the banks of the Potomac River, uh, looking at the White House. And so that's where it got the brand name White House. It, it also had several other brands, like the Lincoln brand, Monument brand, and everything to do with D.C. we had a brand for. Uh, but White House was the one that, you know, uh, expanded and, and remains today. Uh, we don't really have the White House on our label anymore, but we used to, and certainly all the glassware has the embossed White House uh, on it, you know, the President's house. Uh, we still use it for our bulk uh, vinegar, and the company's founded on vinegar, so it's kind of neat, and 
Then in 1913, moved to Winchester where the orchards were, or more prominent uh, orchard supply was here. This plant was built with orchards surrounding it. Obviously, they're not here today. Uh, you know, the, the, the town has expanded and, and whatnot. So, but that's, that's, how, that's how we came to be. And so we were 100% vinegar, founded on vinegar. We went into sauce and juices and apple butter and segments and dices and you name it, everything. And vinegar really became, uh, about 2006, vinegar was shrinking only about 30% of our business and shrinking about 6% a year. And then of course today it's back up to 60% of our business. So with all the health benefits of, of vinegar. Um, so we, if people want apples, we got them. <laughs> The White House brand now produces over 650 varieties of juice, applesauce, and vinegar. You know, we make juice and sauce and, and, and vinegar, but, uh, you know, every combination of, of those things. And so, you know, when it comes to vinegar, we have the, we have the vinegar drink. So we have green tea with vinegar. We have uh, grape juice with vinegar and peach with vinegar. Um, we have a detox. Uh, so all those things are kind of neat and we have a, a lot of new things. We have an on-the-go, a little two, uh, two ounce container that you can take and take your vinegar regiment while you're traveling and I really like that one myself because I travel quite a bit. So we, we pack it in many, many different ways, about 650 total SKUs. We also pack for other people, so we pack for the, for, you know, for the grocery chains. You know, so so if, if we can make we make a strawberry sauce and a, a banana sauce and you know unsweetened and sweetened and um, you know we make a chunky. So we were the first ones to come up with a chunky sauce, uh, and you know that's kind of a signature item for us. Uh, not too many people make that. Uh, some people try to make it by just making applesauce, regular applesauce, and then throwing dices in it. Uh, we actually make a slice, and and it really is a true chunky uh, sauce made from Golden Delicious apples only. So, it really has a fantastic flavor. The first step is receiving the apples from the orchard. Once they are checked in, USDA inspected, graded, and sorted, they are put in climate-controlled storage. White House stores apples throughout the year in several controlled atmosphere cold rooms with limited oxygen, essentially putting the apples to sleep. This condition allows them to be pulled for production in the same condition as the day they were harvested. Whole apples are transferred into production and first put into a mill where they are crushed. Whole apples just go into this mill and it just pulverizes them into a, basically a pulp. Um, and it's important that you keep that mill, the knives in that mill sharp because you want very clean cuts into this mash. Um, from there, that mash, we add some enzymes that kind of break the fruit down and it helps when we go to the presses that it basically makes it, the fruit juicier, it extracts all the juice from the, from the cells of the fruit. Um, so it'll sit in a mash tank um, after it's milled and um, it'll sit there for a couple hours and then we'll send it to the press. From there, it is sent to the press to extract all the juice from the apples, which then travels to vinegar manufacturing. So we're getting this apple mash um, into the press and it's just a giant hydraulic press with a series of uh, kind of like cheesecloth socks in it. So the mash, so the solids stay outside and the juice gets pressed through those socks. And a lot of, a lot of the byproducts of our process go to these presses also. So, you know, if we're making apple slices, we'll have the, the peel and the core and all that. So that'll also go to the press. Um, there's very little waste in the process. And, and what is left will actually get sent out to uh, some local farmers and they'll use that, what's left of that little bit of apple peel and uh, pumice, they'll use it to feed their cattle and stuff like that. So. They start by fermenting, turning the apple juice into hard apple cider. This process happens in large wooden tanks and takes about two weeks. Then it moves to the acetate process where bacteria converts the fermented alcohol into vinegar. We'll basically turn apple juice into hard apple cider. Um, and after all the fermentable sugars are converted in that product, um, the next step is the acetation process so that hard cider will go to these machines called acetators. And uh, 
In that process, there's a bacteria that converts the fermented alcohol into acetic acid, which is vinegar. The vinegar is then diluted to the bottling strength and sent to a high-speed bottling line. You get a product that's probably 60, 70 grain strength, and that's 70 grain is a measurement of acidity in the product. Um, so that's a d direct correlation with a, a percentage. So it's 7% acid, it would be a 70 grain product. Um, and typical bottling strength is 5%. So really, you know, we'll get anywhere from 60 to 70 grain off, off the acetator and then we'll cut it down with water to get that 5% acidity in a consistent product to the consumer. It is bottled, capped, labeled, packaged in boxes, palletized, and then shipped by order out to their customers. Next, let's follow the process as they turn apples into White House applesauce. They receive up to 25 varieties of apples from orchards. Applesauce is all about the blending of different types of apples in order to get a consistent flavor throughout the entire year. We get a variety of blends. I think we get around 70 varieties of apples um, throughout the year. Uh, and that's kind of what we have in our storage facilities. Apples are brought into the facility after traveling through a water bath. Then, through a proprietary process, White House Foods cold extracts the apple pulp, making applesauce that contains all the components of tasting an apple straight off the tree. They get conveyed inside into the processing equipment. And there we basically have, it's like a giant turbo juice extractor is basically what it is. So it kind of gets pulverized into a pulp and then there's a screen inside that machine in a, a series of blades. And how that works is the, the meat of the fruit gets forced through the screen and the peel, the core, the seed, stems, that kind of stuff gets diverted into a separate stream. So it forces the meat of the fruit out and the tailings go out into a different stream. Uh, from there, the, the, the meat gets brought up to processing temperature to get rid of any bacteria or anything else that was in there and makes it a stable product. From there, it goes to the fillers. All applesauce is hot filled for shelf stabilization while still holding months of freshness. Then the applesauce is packaged and shipped out. At one time in history, Virginia was known as the apple capital of the world. For almost a hundred years, Winchester has been celebrating this fact with the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Festival, which attracts around 300,000 tourists each year. Well, <laughs> so we were the apple capital of the world and uh, you know, the parade is, it's amazing. This town just completely shuts down. And uh, what, a, what a great uh, thing they do. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, happens once a year. It's all done by mainly volunteers and committees that are formed every year. And, and as you get on the committee, then you rise to the level of the, of the chairman of that committee. And then you rise to a different committee and eventually you work your way up to be the president and, and then your past president and, and so forth and so on. But, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a really great thing. So, in, you know, in, in a town of 25,000 people, and, and then, you know, in three days or four days, we'll have, you know, 300,000 or so people here. As White House continues to grow their brand, they are also expanding their own orchards by planting around 30,000 apple trees each year. You know, Virginia is typically a, a business friendly state. Um, you know, we, we have our, you know, uh, pros and cons, and, and, but for the most part, the pros always outweigh the cons. And, uh, you know, we're a right to work state, we've got good people. Um, you know, we're, we're just on the other side of the mountain, we're, you know, where we, we draw, uh, you know, good, hardworking folks who are, who are used to, you know, this type of work and this environment. And so, um, so we, you know, the employees are great. Uh, we pay our folks well. So we don't, uh, we don't, you know, we keep everyone. We very seldom lose people. We have maybe some turnover in the in the entry level, but we very seldom have any turnover, um, you know, of employees. 
Uh, and part of that's because of the region, the area, the you know the quality of the employees, and, and part of that's also because they're part of our company. They're you know they're part of our family. Uh, they share in the profits of the company. We have monthly meetings to tell them what's going on and how that's impacting their wages, etc. So um, you know <coughs> there's uh, there's not as many apples here as it used to be. So you know we're vertically in vertically integrated now. So in 2010, 2012. Uh, we started a mass uh, orchard planting expansion uh, and just realized that, you know, we needed to, you know, the, the farmer of yesterday doesn't exist, you know, and passing it down to your family, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, there's agriculture's not as sexy it used to be and, and uh, you know, and so, so that's, um, th those farms are kind of going away and we realized that we'd have to pick that responsibility up ourselves and we've done that. Uh, we're also working uh, you know, with the coal mines in West Virginia and converting some of those to orchards right now. So that's really a really unique and neat project that we have going on uh, that's going to you know, ensure apple production and apple supply for many years to come. We love being in Virginia. Uh, I've lived here all my life. Uh, I can't think of living anywhere else. And I've been all over the place and all over the world. And uh, this is just a great place to be. Located 60 miles east of Washington, D.C. and nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Williams Orchard has been a family-owned and operated farm since 1921, producing peaches, garden-fresh vegetables, beef cattle, apples, and fresh-pressed, unpasteurized apple cider. Our cider is uh, unpasteurized, and, uh, and we are regulated. We can only sell it on site now because of that factor. And um, I don't know of another. There's a cidery in Winchester, but his is pasteurized. I can't think of another one, unpasteurized cider right off, that's right off hand close by. Uh, it's simply, it hasn't been pasteurized. Uh, it hasn't been through a heat process or ultraviolet light. And it's just all natural juice. It's nothing but the uh, squeezed apple and the juice and nothing added. And it just uh, has, it's got a cleaner, more distinctive taste to it that people enjoy. And it's what they, especially the older people, because it's what they remember from 30, 40, or 50 years ago. That's all they had, yeah. yeah. I guess my step-grandfather started this orchard. His name was George Williams back in the 19, early 20s, 1920, 21. And uh, his uh, ex-wife and my father bought the farm. And so my dad's been here since about, oh, I don't know, uh, 20, he, they bought it around 1929 or 30, which was a really tough period, of course. Yeah, we have the elevation here, the soil's good, uh, southeast exposure. And Rappahannock County was known for such a long period of time for for apple and fruit or peach production. Apples are harvested and three to four varieties are mixed into a bin that holds 18 to 22 bushels. Yeah, for the cider, we always use, uh, like to use at least three varieties. Yorks are good, Romes, Stamens, wine saps, and early in the season, a, a Red Delicious works well also. But we'll put any of those three or sometimes four in a batch. The bin is tilted and the apples put onto a table and inspected for rot and excess leaves. Then the apples are washed through a set of wet brushes. Then the apples travel up an elevator conveyor to a hammer mill where they are ground into a pomace. The pomace moves to a stainless steel tank and then is pumped out to a table onto a tightly woven cloth sack. Once the sack is full, a plastic rack divider is placed on top of the sack. Then a new sack is placed on the plastic divider and filled with pomace. Fill your sack, close it up at the top. Uh, you put on a plastic rack as a divider, and then you put another sack on top, cloth. Fill that up. We do about 11 claws to a, to a press. When they reach 11 cloth sacks of pomace in height, they slide it all under the hydraulic press. The press squeezes the pomace at a pressure of around 800 pounds per square inch and extracts the cider. The uh, pressing part takes about five to eight minutes. Uh, then once it's done, you remove it, let the press down, bring your table back where you can get to it, and um, 
you remove your claws and just dump them in a wagon. The dry pomace is removed and is used as feed for cattle the following day. The pressed cider is pumped into a stainless steel refrigeration tank where it stays overnight. The cider is jugged in half gallon and gallon jugs the next day, stored in an industrial refrigerator and sold direct to customers from the farm. As Williams Orchard looks to the future of the farm, they plan to continue the family tradition of producing some of the greatest tasting apple cider right here in Virginia. From Johnny Appleseed to present day, Virginia continues to develop and grow some of America's best tasting apples. Production funding for Made in Virginia is made possible in part by the Virginia Foundation for Public Media, supporting public media initiatives throughout Virginia, and by At Atlantic Union Bank, we believe that Made in Virginia means something special, something unique. After all, Virginia is where tradition meets technology, where hard work combines with innovation, where artisans, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and corporations take business to the next level. We're there every step of the way, as champions of Virginia businesses and as a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting.